Hey everyone, I'm your host Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show and today is exciting! I have a very special guest. This man is incredible and what he does is unique and special and necessary. You know I only bring my audience the best stuff. So help me welcome to the stage Mr. Sam Kimani and what he does helping us get to a better place financially on the gentleman style podcast stage welcome sir welcome to the gentleman style Fantastic. podcast show thank you thank you Marcus. it's great to be on your show um i love your energy and i love what you're doing with your show um let me give you a bit of a background about myself Please. about my journey and then a little bit about what I'm doing as well. So first of all, I have been involved in um, tech startups for the last 15 years. Um, I've had two small exits. So where I built a company, I grew it, and then I sold that company um, to another business. So that's what I've done. My first business was in e-commerce or my first startup was in e-commerce space. So we had our own brand. We built it. I, I grew the revenue um, quite a bit. We used to sell the products in um, US, Australia, New Zealand, and some parts in Asia. And then a, a la much larger Chinese company bought it um, or a company that was doing business in China bought it. Um, and then after that, I moved back into tech because I was a developer with sort of with my origin. Um, and so the next business was in tech startup. And with that was uh, eSports um, in the eSports. So we used to create um, a platform where people can run eSports or um, competitions and things like that. And that with that, I was based near San Francisco or in Bay Area for a short time. And that got acquired in 2018. So after that, I came back home to New Zealand. I live in New Zealand, so I'm talking right now, and it's Tuesday. I know it's Monday for you. <laughs> I'm calling you from future. <laughs> so after that, I wrote books on tech startups, and um, I speak at events, and I also work as a growth advisor for two or three different um, technology startups, um, and they are in the Web3 space and the blockchain space. Um, yeah, so I help companies grow. Basically, that's what I do. So if you have any questions on on growth or or you know building businesses, selling them anything, feel free to ask them. I also run a podcast called Web3 with Sam Kamani, and it's on every sort of audio platform where I interview founders and investors who invest in blockchain-based businesses or who are building blockchain-based businesses. So yeah, so that's that's everything about me. Yeah, very well-rounded, very well-rounded, very talented. You do a lot, sir. And so I don't, you've done so many things in businesses out of and invested in multiple businesses. Out of all your businesses and all your ventures, which one is your favorite? Which which has been <laughs> the 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 most be, the best investment for you? Okay, so the first one that I did um, was in the e-commerce space, and and of course it was the timing. Um, so it was from 2007 to 2015 I ran that, and that has been the most um, financially rewarding for me um, because you know um, I am always early when it comes to technology. To give you an example of that, um, I was buying Google AdWords in 2004. This is 18 years ago when no one knew about Google AdWords and people. People were people thought that I'm silly. I'm wasting my money. That is just a fad. All those sort of things. And so I used the same sort of techniques to to grow that business and um, make it a multi million dollar business and then sell it. So um, financially, that was the most rewarding, and that's because purely because of doing things what others are not doing. So in 2007, I was doing Google AdWords, but towards later on, like 2012, 13, 14, or even 15. I stopped doing um, or I stopped doing um, that many sort of, say, digital ads. And I went back to, um, say, things like TV ads or radio ads because the idea is is arbitrage. You know, you want to be where um, you don't have any competitors, but all your audience is there. And that's what was 
when it came to digital back in the days. And then later on, it was in sort of analog channels, like because um, we used to market a product that was targeted at men age over 55. And in 2014, there were more men age over 55 watching golf at 3 a.m. in the night. And there's no competitors advertising to them. So we could buy ads for a few dollars on, on TV. And compared to, say, like Google ads or social media ads or things that that did cost in thousands. So, um, so yeah, it's just finding arbitrage. So that that was the most financially rewarding. But when it comes to uh, rewarding in form of other ways, um, I do love running my podcast, even though it might not have a direct financial um, impact. I have made lifelong friends through running my podcast and interviewing people. And I've built networks and connections all over the world. It's like, um, I live in Auckland, New Zealand, and I just got back five, six days ago from LA. I was in LA for eight, nine days. It, like I stayed with so many of my friends in their in their places and they took me around all around um, LA and Southern California and stuff. And I had so much fun. All these friends I made through podcasting and now I work with people um, in sort of in the growing businesses space through the friends that I've made it through podcasting so um, I would say when it comes to sort of personal growth I would say it's my podcast that has been the most impactful Um, but yes of course if it comes to just purely financial there, there have been other businesses that did well for me. For sure. For sure. And that's the thing is diversification. You hear it all the time. That's a common phrase, diversification, diversification. And over the extents of your years, many years, you look good. You look good. You don't look over 30, man. You look really good. <laughs> I am 41. <laughs> what? Lies. And yes. this, you look incredible. That... Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm curious, though. We, we I want to touch on Web3 and, and yes. how this is changing the market. But you also mentioned the blockchain and when you mention blockchain you can't you cannot mention nfts what are yes. nfts and should people invest their money in nfts does it make sense cuz you said it's it's timing right when you yes. got into e-commerce and when you got into google it was a timing thing are nfts yes. the time is the time now to invest yeah i mean that is a very very good point you know with timing you want to be just right. You don't want to be too early because if you are too early, none of your customers are there because you still need someone to sell to. So um, it, there's no point in being online and trying to sell online in 1996 or 97 when there is no one there. No one has um, you know, heard of or tried internet shopping. People are really skeptical that, oh, what, you're going to give your credit card to someone online on the internet? Are you crazy? You'd be scammed. <laughs> it's like um, it's like saying to someone that, hey, I'm going to jump into a stranger's car and that stranger will take me somewhere or I'm going <laughs> to sleep in upstairs of a stranger's house. But now Uber and Airbnb are a common thing. People are okay with that, you know? So it is a, it is a timing thing that, you know, you want your timing to be right. And I do feel that even though NFTs have utility that utility is kind of overshadowed by all the hype and all the noise and all the scams and all the pyramid schemes in the market so i do feel that nfts are still a bit early there's very few people who really participate in a meaningful way in nfts most people are just flicking them or trading them um nfts could be for a lot, lot um, more. I mean, even though I work in a company that creates smart contracts that uh, people who want to create NFT projects use, um, it's called smart contract dot recipes. Um, even though I do that, um, I would still say that NFTs are still a bit early. Um, to give you an example of how NFTs could work is creating access around your brand creating an access around your art your content so say if um like gentleman style podcast you have your podcast you have all your content but you create an nft collection and and you have some special content that could be training that could be some special interviews with some very special people and if people want to listen to those if people want to access that training they need that nft in their digital wallet um so and because each NFT is associated like a non-fungible token, so each one has a token number 
and that is a unique token number and you use that as a ticket as an access to it. so people use that to access your content and this could be sort of a lifelong access so as long as they have that in their digital wallet they can access your content and that's how you yourself can use nft now every sort of a business would have some sort of a use case now Someone might say, or you might say that, you know, why don't I just use a regular sort of a ticket on Eventbrite or something like that and just sell them an access through email or email login and stuff. Um, yes, I mean, you can let people log in through email. You could create a platform like that, or you, there might be platforms like, I'm sure there are platforms like that where people can pay a membership fees, join in, but there is a key unique difference that, you know, when someone is, say, you created this NFT and this NFT gives, um, you sell that to me and, and now I have access to, um, to, your, to your Zoom. I can have a catch up with you once in a while, get consulting from you, get advice from you and um, access some of your unique content. But then say after six months, um, I have got all the value I can out of your course, I, out of your everything I want, then I can sell this NFT on an open marketplace, as well as you can code in that NFT that every time this NFT gets resold, 50% of the revenue goes back to you. You can write that in the smart contract. So every time I sell, it automatically gets executed and you automatically get that money in your digital wallet. So this sort of utility is very hard to do with email, let's say. So if you did allow people to log into your website with email and login, I cannot go and sell my email to someone else. Um, and even if I, I mean, that's not just, that's not a practical solution. So NFTs have a lot, a lot of utility. I mean, I just gave you one example. I mean, there, there's probably 100 different examples of how NFTs can be used and how the utilities around, utility around it can be used. Um, we will see more and more um, cases around, around built around NFTs, but I do feel we are still a bit early, maybe in a year or a couple of years, you will see mainstream solutions, mainstream brands using NFTs for pretty much nearly everything. The reason why Gary V's NFTs made $90 million for him in the first 90 days is because if you want to go to a VCon or his conference, the only way to get in is through using his nft so that is like an access that yes and then the other the most common criticism is that uh, because most of the nfts are for art that if you have an nft for art that oh you can just copy it or save it but it won't have the same token number because there's only one of those token numbers so you can attach access to it and it's very easy you can go to some a platform like ethernet like eth scan or poly scan or or any of those and you can see who really created that. So if it was an NFT created by you, then it would have value because it has your access attached to it, you know, access to your content or, or whatever you have decided to give them. But if I, if I just copied it, it won't have any access attached to it. The digital wallet won't recognize it. It won't give them that. So um, yes, you can copy it, but you're not, you're unable to copy the same because it's a unique token number. It's, um, there's no two, same token numbers and stuff so so yeah so that's in short <laughs> makes sense <laughs> i love it love it love it that makes perfect sense and it helps break the ice on nft so so yes. connect and that's huge right because the world yes. is changing around us things are changing around us and if we don't connect with experts like yourself um who have inside knowledge and and your knowledge is vast because you've crossed several streams of of, of different yes. businesses starting selling um those are unique aspects that most people don't think about most people don't think about selling their company everybody wants to start a business no one ever thinks about the end game and you have inside knowledge on that i want to talk about i want to pivot a little bit because you also said esports and esports when i think esports i i think the professional gamers of games right the guys at the top yes getting paid to do to play video games right and so that's yes. the that's the pinnacle that's the extreme but you have inside knowledge because you've been in that industry um how can people start making money in video games with the technology of web3 how does that work and how does that integrate how do people make money by playing video games okay let me give um let me um give you an example that is not of esports but it applies to this as well so um for example 
um you know you'd heard you'd have heard of the of the gold rush back in the days in the west in the wild wild west of the like you know this is like maybe 140 years ago 1800 something 1880 whatever in around san francisco and in california and then, like the whole gold rush era and everyone trying to look for gold um the people who really did make money consistently were the people who were selling services to people who are going to look for gold so people who are selling buckets and shovels and all those because they had a steady stream of new people coming in to look for gold whereas people who are looking for gold sometimes they would hit big sometimes they would make nothing and lose all their fortune just looking so that is the same thing as um, when it comes to sports or music or esports that yes some of the players will get high end um contracts from big teams and make 20 million a year or 5 million or 2 million or whatever the amount may be just like you know in in basketball the top 100 people make all the money <laughs> um like um but there are lots of other ways to engage in that industry and and have a more consistent sort of a career and an income um so for example not everyone will have the skills of lebron james or not everyone will have the uh, skills of steph curry or you know um have have the the genetics and in everything of of that and the connections and the training from childhood for that and the same thing applies with esports not everyone will have that what it takes to do 12 14 hours of uh, practice on on whatever game they play online for the last 10 years and and have that sort of um time and commitment put in so not everyone will at the top of their game in that way but just like with um it was with the gold rush just like that it is with sports so in sports they have to sustain so many stadiums ticketing um marketing advertising there is so many adjacent like food so many adjacent fields attached to um attached to sports so the same thing applies to esports or same thing applies to gaming in in web3 that there are so many other other ways to make money you could be designer you could be um a content creator like on youtube on twitch you could be someone who specializes in promoting someone who specializes in consulting and and growing the brands for individual gamers or for managing those teams so um you i have friends who work purely as announcers and commentators in in esports there are i have friends who purely work as journalists or media people in in esports um and they have massive like over 100000 following on twitter and and they get covered by all the major news media and and they get paid to speak so there are so many so many so many different ways to um to go around it i have another friend who works for a big uh, accounting firm kpmg and all his um thing is that he advises kpmg's clients on how they can advertise and get audience on on esports um so he's making consistently big money so his job is not reliant on how the game does how the player does you know if the player one year they don't perform they lose their contract he is going to make money regardless of who the players new players come and go and new games come and go he's going to make money so there are lots of um careers in the adjacent field that you you should look at which are still fun and still provide and and in fact provide a much more stable and a fantastic sort of an ongoing um income and a career for anyone so i'm struggling i'm really cuz i'm really trying to 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 get it and 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 i guess yes. i'm overwhelmed right i guess i'm more cuz you got you got blockchain you got cryptocurrency you got you got moon um what's it <laughs> doge coin all these different <laughs> coins so yes, yes. i'm overwhelmed at the 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 information and the knowledge but help me understand what is web3 and how it, can can you help me I, i'm i'm the, okay okay I, i'll, I'll help you work? yes i understand i understand what um what you want to um i think we will have to record a one hour <laughs> episode <laughs> on this because there is so much to unpack but let me just share in a in a very few sort of um sentences as as i can um so web1 or the early internet was where you could only read and write so it was all static information it was static blogs and stuff um and then web 2 came 
Um, and all these are just very loosely defined terms. Um, and they are like collection of sort of technologies and a collection or, or a era in time, you can say, you know. Um, so there is no concrete definition. And that's why it is, you're not the only one. Everyone finds it um, a bit more complex to understand this, all this. And then the Web 2 is kind of referred as the age of social media, you know, around 2004, 5, 6, um, all these new social media things came around like LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, all these things came around and you could start um, interacting with it a lot more. You could start sharing because in the web one, there was no sharing. Now you could start sharing, start retweeting or, or whatever you might call it, you know, liking, upvoting, downward, all those sort of things came around and things started to go viral. It sort of exploded and it was aided with the rise of sort of mobile technology that a lot more people could start interacting all the time with it. That was the web too. But in web two, there was a key difference. Anytime you are, say, commenting, making a post on Facebook or Twitter, um, um, like Mark Zuckerberg doesn't pay you to write a comment on Twitch and on Facebook or, or anything, you know, to interact with it. Whereas in Web3, the, there is, all this still exists, but there is another concept called own. So you start to own it. Um, you start to, um, what happens is that the platforms divide themselves in tokens and issue those tokens and reward their usage with tokens. So say the more you interacted with that platform, the more tokens you will earn in that platform. So it's in your interest to, to keep contributing, to keep participating. So not only um, you as an audience member or as a user benefits, the company also benefits and then you get something out of it. The more usage there is, the more the token values appreciate because more people are using, transacting in that token, are using that platform. So it is read, write, share and also own. So that is the that is the key difference in Web3. And that's why there are thousands of different tokens that are associated with all these different platforms. So say, for example, um, you created your GSP token, gentleman style podcast token. Um, and every time someone shares um, and you start with a 1 billion token and every time someone shares that um, your podcast on social media, you reward them one token. Or every time someone asks a meaningful question that you get answered on on social media, you give them five tokens. And then you have this sort of a thing where, um, and then anytime the money comes in, it gets divided between all the token holders. So so then people get a share. And then that's why, and then those tokens are liquidly traded. They are liquid assets. They can be traded on the market. And so, so a lot of tokens are associated with some form of a platform and stuff. And then that's just part of it. Um, so it's kind of like tokenizing assets and things like that. So I just gave you one example. There are probably 10,000 different examples on how it is being used in different industries in different ways. So, and so you can create your own token. You could create your own sort of currency. There is nothing stopping you. <laughs> so it's almost like buying stocks in a business, right? Pretty you much. Pretty a, much. You become a shareholder in the benefit. So like you said, sticking yes. with that same thing, I like where you're going. I like I like the sound of this. Yes. People who share and subscribe and tune in to Gentleman Style Podcast can become they they can get tokens, they can get rewarded for tokens uh with tokens from the show. And then as yes. they have more tokens, when profits come in to Gentleman Style Podcast, the token holders actually reap the benefits of those profits as well. Did I did I follow or am I way off? Yes, yes, in a way, in a way. This is a very simplistic um, explanation, and this is just one use case. There's probably 20 other use cases wow. of Web3 that we can go into, and that's why I think we'll have to do another <laughs> one with a one hour, <laughs> book one hour, and, and, and I can go through some more, and I can share with you the differences between the different um, sort of currencies or different blockchains, because different currencies often run on different types of blockchains and stuff. Um, so I can go in more more in in depth in in that <laughs> with yeah. with some examples and stuff of course to to make it easy for anyone to understand so yeah where can people go to learn more about web3 making money with block with blockchain 
in and integrating Web3 into their business? Sure. So you can just search for me, Sam Kamani, and I talk a lot about all this stuff and um, or search for my name on any of the audio platform. So I have my own own um, my own podcast, uh, Web3 with Sam Kamani. So just search. Um, yeah, search that on any audio platform and you'll find it. And I cover all these sort of topics, especially the early episodes are the where I explain um, in detail in a very simple easy to understand language so what are nfts what is metaverse what is web3 what is how do you you know um do security in this you know how do you be secure and all those sort of things um i must admit i haven't i have so much content i have a few hundred hours of content that i need to edit and put on youtube <laughs> but i <laughs> there's only so much time in a day so <laughs> understand understand you're busy man busy man thank you mr kamani this has been fantastic and we need to get you back on stage because you are helping us get to a better place so thank you so much for being here and giving back in this way any 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 anything left and is there any final nuggets you want to share um i think um i think um, you have to be safe. I think um, the best thing to do is learn and educate yourself um, as much as you can in, in this space. So that would be my number one advice that um, start learning, um, start getting educate, educating yourself in this space before you spend any money or you before you give anyone any <laughs> any money in this space. So I, I would say that. So be be safe. This all this is not investment advice. Do your own research. Learn everything you can before you start engaging in it financially. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Kamani. This is huge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank here. you. It's been fantastic. Absolutely. And we got to let him go. Mr. Kamani has been absolutely incredible. Thank you all for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast show. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has been incredible. And I hope this helps you take your business to the next level, y'all. This has been amazing. Like I always end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your family, and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast show signing off with the incredible love and information of Sam Kamani. Love you guys. Bye.